What's going on guys? So, when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of TV. Nickelodeon was a channel I watched a lot. Until a certain point in the night when they would transition into Nick at Night. That's when they would start to play all their older programming. Shows like The Dick Van Dyke Show, I Dream of Jeannie, and The Monsters. All of these shows were in black and white. When I was a kid, I associated black and white with being old because of this. Being that I wanted colorful cartoons, I would quickly change the channel to Cartoon Network or the Disney Channel rather than watch things that I associated as being for old people. Up until I became an adult and I began to grow a deeper appreciation for movies and TV, some of that association with black and white being old and, you know, from a different time and not something that I could appreciate, lingered. As my taste in movies and TV evolved, so did this predisposition that I had with black and white. As an adult and armed with the ability to consume and reassess black and white media, I became fascinated with movies and TV shot in black and white in the modern day. Now, up until around the year 1961, almost every episode of TV and movie was shot in black and white. Then, when color came spilling onto the screen, it became increasingly rarer and rarer for things to be filmed in black and white as the decades went on. Nowadays, you don't see big budget movies that are trying to appeal to general audiences released in black and white. It's mostly just considered to be too inaccessible. There is a reason we stopped doing it, after all. It's just evocative of a different era. However, there are cases where a modern filmmaker will use this medium as a way to convey a certain theme or message. It could be used to depict a flashback, a certain time in history, or as a way of intellectualizing what a person is feeling at a given time. When executed well, it can be very effective in getting across what the filmmaker is trying to say in the same way that music or shot composition can be used to totally change the tone of a scene. Today I want to take a look at some of my favorite black and white modern films and talk about why I think they're effective at using the black and white medium. There will be some mild spoilers for the movies I'll be discussing, so this is your warning. A movie that I really love that utilizes the juxtaposition of black and white and color is Pleasantville from 1998, starring Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon. The film is about a brother and sister who gets sucked into a television sitcom from the golden era of television. It's a surprisingly heartfelt and emotionally resonant fish-out-of-water story. It sees Tobey Maguire's character as this die-hard fan of the show who knows every character and all of their quirks, and how they ultimately clash with the modern-day sensibilities of him and his sister, played by Reese's character. It's a remarkable movie that I think is really ahead of its time. The modern-day scenes are all in color, and then when they go into the television show, it becomes black and white. Then, as Toby and Reese's characters begin to interact and affect the lives of the citizens of Pleasantville, things start to become more colorful. I really love the way that they do this. You know, there'll be a scene where two characters are having a romantic interaction, and then a rose next to them will all of a sudden be in color. And then the contrast of that bright red versus the black and white around them is just so evocative, and it's kind of on the nose, but it tells you exactly what's going on in that moment. It's, in my eyes, a truly inspired utilization of black and white and color. In a film that lovingly homages a time and place and values that are associated with that time and place that have been long forgotten to the annals of TV history. That's an example of a film that uses both color and black and white, but how about a modern film that is totally just black and white? One that I think probably deserves more attention is Nebraska from the year 2013. It stars Will Forte and Bruce Dern as a father-son duo living in, well, Nebraska. The film follows this pairing as they embark on a road trip to claim a million dollar prize that Dern's character believes to have won, but Forte sees for the scam that it is. Unwilling to accept this in his stubbornness and old age, Forte's character indulges him on a bleak but sincere pilgrimage that leads them through Bruce Dern's character's hometown. On this journey, Dern and Forte's characters begin to grow a deeper understanding of each other, despite the disparate generations between them. The black and white in this film is used to great effect to help impart the feeling of isolation and stagnation that comes along with living in this part of Middle America. It gives it this sort of timeless feeling that black and whites can so effortlessly convey. There's this feeling of time passing rapidly, yet agonizingly slow at the same time. It has this feeling of wondering whether your life has slipped away from you and wondering whether you're doomed to repeat the mistakes of your father. It's this deeply personal, generational story that's highlighted through the use of the black and white medium. This is an example of a film that I think would be made definitively worse had it been shown to me in color. 
A film that was shot in black and white due to financial reasons and not because of any artistic expression is Clerks from 1994. This was at the tail end of the era where everything was shot on film, and we began to transition to shooting things on digital, which is substantially cheaper. Guys like Tarantino still shoot on film to this day, but for the most part, everything's digital now. In 1994, Kevin Smith had little to no money to make this movie. So, being that black and white is cheaper than color, he opted to do so with black and white. Considering that the budget of the film was less than 30000 they were doing whatever they could to cut costs during the production. However, despite this, I find it to be a bit of a happy accident. Similar to Nebraska, Clerks taps into this certain mundanity of everyday life that black and white can impart onto the viewer. When you get so caught up in the monotony of your daily routine, it can start to feel like you're looking at the world through a black and white filter. And that, that's something that I think Clerks does very well. Despite that not being the intention, it only serves to elevate the viewing experience. People, when they reviewed the movie, there was some critic a long time ago who said, like, it's almost as if, the, because it's black and white, the movie was shot from the perspective of the store security camera. And then every interview I did after that, I'd be like, we shot it in black and white because we wanted it to seem like it was shot from the store security camera. A more recent black and white film that I'm particularly fond of is The Lighthouse from 2019. Directed by Robert Eggers, who is very fond of historical accuracy in his films, utilized many different techniques to help get across the time period that the lighthouse is set in, which is the early 1890s. Eggers is a filmmaker who puts atmosphere over mostly everything else. He really wants to create this feeling of being there. His focus on dialect and accurate dialogue can be off-putting to some viewers, but for those looking for as realistic of an experience as possible, it's a great benefit to his films. The usage of black and white, a nearly square aspect ratio, period accurate sets and costumes, and his trademark authentic dialogue all serve to create this sense of immersion into this place that we've never been, somewhere we don't belong. Taking into account the direction that the story goes in, it carries with it this suggestion that we're watching events unfold that we should not be watching. A movie like The Lighthouse simply doesn't work in color. Due in part, I would imagine, to the fact that Robert Pattinson's character looks like Super Mario when it's in color. So, outside of the obvious black and white nature of life and all the themes that can go along with that, we can conclude that different filmmakers do this for different reasons. It was done in the past for financial reasons, it can be done to elicit an emotional response from two juxtaposing ideologies, or it can just be done to evoke a certain time and a place. These aren't the only reasons to do black and white in the modern era, but they are a few of them. I think sometimes it can be done to try to elevate a movie to this false level of prestige that it doesn't quite earn, and it can be used as a crutch to lean on rather than something that services the story. There are some modern films that were shot in color but also have a black and white version that can be appreciated as a companion piece to the original. Movies like Mad Max Fury Road, Logan, and Nightmare Alley. I really appreciate that some movies do this in the modern era because they can totally recontextualize the way that you see that movie. So. What are some of your favorite modern day black and white films? There are plenty that I didn't mention, so I'd love to hear some of the ones that you feel really utilize the medium well. So with that said, drop a like, hit the subscribe button if you're into that sort of thing, and remember to take care and watch more movies in black and white.